March 17, 2017, this is the Watchman News, and I'm Mike Callahan. Uh, I'm going to give an update on a story we covered pretty extensively yesterday. Um, I'm also going to provide uh, information on how to help uh, the seven children that are now orphaned. And as well, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of information that came my way, although I have not confirmed it. I will still uh, I will still give that information that I, I've came across. So anyway... As for the story, um, this is out of Belleville News Democrat. If you if you didn't catch the show yesterday, this will be able to catch you up to what's going on. Okay, the story is titled, This is What Happened on Dogwood Lane and at Silver Lake. There's a video. I'll play that in just a moment. A sleepy suburban subdivision in Glen Carbon woke up before sunrise on a chilly March morning to fire trucks and police cars surrounding a home engulfed in flames. Sixteen and a half miles away, Christy Campbell drove a blue-gray Nissan Armada SUV with a three-month-old baby inside off a two-lane highway and into Silver Lake near Highland. A misty mystery surrounding the two events and their possible connections began unfolding shortly after 5.30 a.m. Thursday and continued through the day. Questions mounted as officials worked to identify a person who died in the fire as well as Christy Campbell's body found hours later in the lake. Many questions were still unanswered Thursday evening. The home at 15 Dogwood Lane, where seven children lived, had burned beyond a livable state by 7 a.m., Neighbors said the children's parents lived there, too. One person died in the fire, but Madison County Coroner Stephen Nunn said he had not determined a positive identity as of Thursday evening. It's my understanding the body was very badly burned, Madison County Sheriff John Lakin said in a Thursday afternoon news conference. An autopsy was scheduled for Friday morning. Six of the children, ranging in age from 4 to 14, escaped the burning home, which is owned by Christy Campbell, 32, according to property records. Two of the children fled to a nearby Walmart for help. Chilling surveillance footage from a neighbor's home shows the children tottering down the street in the dark. The seventh child was later found floating inside the gray SUV in Silver Lake. A passerby saw the vehicle drive into the lake and called 911. That's when paramedic Todd Zobris arrived at the lake and became a hero. He dived into the 46 degree water, swam more than 50 feet, and pulled the baby to safety. Zobris then performed CPR on the baby while on the hood of the partially submerged SUV. The baby was then flown to a St. Louis hospital. Todd Zobris saved the child's life today the sheriff said. Zoberst was recovering and trying to stay warm as of Thursday afternoon, Highland Fire EMS Chief Brian Wilson said. When everyone heard someone jumped in the water, there was no question of who it was, Wilson added. The child was in good condition as of Thursday evening, Lakin said, and was expected to be released from the hospital Friday. The other children were placed in the care of a relative. After the vehicle went into the lake, conservation police with a sonar-equipped boat searched the water, while police with dogs searched the woods near Silver Lake. Glen Carbon police had issued a search alert Thursday morning for Christy Campbell, describing her as a person of interest and possibly endangered. Hours after Zobris saved the baby, Christy Campbell's body was found in the lake not far from where the vehicle sank. Police had been called to 15 Dogwood Lane, about 50 times since 2010 for various reasons, including barking dogs, 911 hang-ups, and other calls for service, the sheriff said. Neighbors said while the Campbell home was a little chaotic with so many children running around and playing, they seemed like a normal family. The Country Meadows subdivision where they lived is the kind of neighborhood with street names like Redbud Lane and Meadow Lane. It's tucked away behind a busy shopping area. They were nice people, said Sherry Ricker, who has lived across the street from the Campbell's house since 2004. Ricker said Christy Campbell lived there with her children and husband, though it could not be independently verified Thursday that Christy Campbell's husband or ex-husband lived there. Mitchell Langenhorst has lived across the street from the house for two years. They were normal people, Langenhorst said. 
the kids were pretty hectic. Langenhorst watched the story unfold on televised news. When he saw the Nissan Armada pulled from Silver Lake, he said he recognized it right away. I recognized that car, he said. I saw it parked out front of 15 Dogwood Lane all the time. Court records show Christy Campbell and her ex-husband Justin Campbell's marriage was rocky. They had their first child in 2002, when Christy Campbell was still a teenager, and they married in 2006. In 2005, Justin Campbell was charged with aggravated domestic violence, a felony for allegedly slapping his wife, who was pregnant at the time. The charge was reduced to a misdemeanor as part of a plea bargain, and he paid a $500 fine and was placed on probation for a year. The couple filed for divorce in 2010, but changed their minds and ended the proceedings. Christy Campbell requested an order of protection against Justin Campbell in April 2012, but requested that it be allowed to expire 15 days later. She filed for divorce again in September 2012. Justin Campbell failed to respond to the filing before the court date in 2013, according to court records, and it was finalized without his participation. The divorce included provisions for child support and visitation. A search of Christy Campbell's records turned up mostly parking tickets, though she was charged in 2014 with allowing her five-year-old child to leave their home unattended. The charges were dropped after she completed parenting classes. Christy Campbell's posts on social media depict a happy motherhood. Her Facebook profile picture showed her receiving a kiss from a dolphin. One post showed pictures of a child posing with the Do the Right Thing Award. Family portraits and pictures of her then newborn baby dot the mother's Facebook profile. Whether Christy Campbell's ex-husband died Wednesday was unclear as of Thursday evening, but the sheriff pointed out the death toll could have been nine instead of two if it weren't for the bravery of emergency responders and police. So that's the uh, that's the story, the latest um, that is that is in print. Um, there is someone that uh, is associated with the children through child care and, uh, and, and says that they are wonderful kids. Um, so I believe it's the same person that gave me some information on how to help. If you want, real quick, let's, uh, let's just go through this. You can kind of see the uh, children in the right side there, just to the left of the telephone pole. And they'll come running up the street momentarily. Okay, so now for the information that I have for you. Um, these are the children. Um, they, of course, are, are having drives to help the children. I'm, I'm sure that they lost everything in the fire. Um, and, and mom and dad, it's, uh, it, it's crazy. So, um, here's their ages. Um, Justin, age 14, in the 8th grade. Robbie, age 13, in the 7th grade. Madeline age 11, 5th grade, Myelin, age 10, 4th grade, Christian, age 7, 1st grade, Je uh, Jeremiah, age 4 and a half. Uh, Julian was the 3 month old. Uh, it says he's in intensive care, but uh, to my knowledge, he's supposed to be released today, so I don't know how, uh, how accurate that part is. A uh, little more information on the boys. Uh, this is what there says. The children's immediate needs are being met by the department, but donations of gently used or new clothing and toys would be greatly appreciated. In addition, and this is where I think maybe you guys can help out, gift cards to places like Walmart would be helpful for family members to purchase items that are needed as well as help, uh, help them with additional grocery expenses. So here's the specifics on the children. Um, boy age 4, clothing size 5T, shoe size 10. Girl age 6, almost 7, 
Clothing size wasn't given, shoe size 13. Boy age 8, clothing size 8, shoe size 2. Girl age 11, clothing size 11, 12, shoe size 5. Boy age 13, shirt size medium to large, pants 10 to 12, um, shoe size 7 to 7 and a half. Boy age 14, shirt size large, pants 14, 16, shoe size 9. So, and I don't believe that the, uh, the three month old is there in that list. So, how can you help? You know, I gave out those ages and the sizes just uh, because it was information I have. Um, and then I'll, I'll give you the unconfirmed, unconfirmed information after I show you how you can contact. Now, I will put this address um, down in the description of the video, okay? So that way, uh, if you can't see it clear enough, uh, you'll still be able to, uh, to help them out. The address that where you can send gift cards to, um, this is the daycare, and uh, they are taking donations. It is number 5, 157 Center, Edwardsville, Illinois. Let me get you their zip here. She gave it to me on Facebook. Um, zip code is 62025. So once again... That would be Kids Club. Put Kids Club on it. That's number 5, 157 Center, Edwardsville, Illinois, 62025. Again, I will put that address down in the description. So, along with the links to all the information I provided. Now for the unconfirmed information. I save this for last because it is unconfirmed. Um, there is word that the father... Uh, was shot and killed before the fire was set. Now, I have not confirmed this from any type of news source or any type of official source, um, but that is, uh, that is what has been said. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. Yeah, because it says, uh, in the post, it says, uh, if you don't believe in God, then you need to read yesterday's news. If there is not a God, then how did six kids make it out of a house fire where their dad was shot and killed on the couch? It's a blessing from God that they didn't get caught up in the fire trying to save their dad. So, um, again, that's unconfirmed, but apparently that's going around, and uh, I will keep my eyes peeled on it. So that's the latest information I have. I thank you all for watching. I, I deeply thank you and, 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 you know, wish the best of blessings for anybody that can help out. So, again, gift cards you can send to that address, number 5, 157 Center, Edwardsville, Illinois. And it's, I believe, 62025. So, again, the address will be down in the description. Thanks, folks. Talk to you later.